<laughs> Quit horsing around. <coughs> Too late. Hello, everybody. Welcome yeah, back to Cooking Up Puns. We are looking up uh, the recipe so that we can see what exactly we have to do. We have all our ingredients li lined up here in the tray. Don't worry, we don't feel betrayed. And we also have our floppers. Or spatulas. And we have multiple colors. Just because. Today we're making molasses crinkle cookies, which is a all-time favorite of my family. And we're going to be making them because I won't be seeing my family this year. So we're going to make some and enjoy them and not have to share. <laughs> That's the way the cookie crumbles. Da -dun -ching. <laughs> so, funny enough, the first direction will not be to set the oven, which... Isn't that normally the first direction? Oh, knocking the bowl over here. Going bowling already, dear? I'm going bowling. <laughs> <laughs> right around um, the block. <laughs> the first direction is not preheat your oven, which normally, nine times out of ten, it usually is. So that was a shock for me when I read the recipe. I went, what? That's because <laughs> there's going to be a two to three hour cooling period or uh, time where you put the dough in the fridge to cool down. Um, so that'll give you a chance to catch up on some Netflix or... Um, Wrangle your children if they're running about wild, so you know. I'll go for a jog around the block. That too. Hey, make the kids run around the block. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat. Are they jogging to catch up? <laughs> At least it's not mustard. So the first step is to cream the shortening and the brown sugar together. Creaming usually means mixing really, really well and beating it with a blender. So this is the shortening. So I'm going to dump this into here. With the spatula, I wash my hands, I swear to God. Don't swear. So I'm gonna get this all out. It wasn't it wasn't that hard to get all out. Whoop. One tip, uh, I've learned that if your shortening is room temperature and the room temperature is a little chillier than you like, uh, heat it up in the microwave for about 10 second <coughs> intervals to make sure you don't have a full liquid by the time you're done. I've had that happen a couple times. And what else am I throwing in? Sugar. Okay, sugar. Um, the brown sugar. Uh, brown, brown, sh brown sugar. Brown okay. sugar. I'm like, I ha it looks like I have more than I have granulated sugar as well. So. Now we are creaming it, which means we're going to make sure it's completely mixed together. Clunk. <laughs> That's one thing about uh, brown sugar as well. It does um, pack. You can pack it together, and then it just. Yeah. Packs a punch, doesn't it? It does. What? Hi! <laughs> what are you doing? Everything. Okay. Wanna pour tip? Melt it in the microwave. It'll cream better that way, because you're in high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not throwing this in the microwave. Why not? This whole thing? You can. Oh, okay. Just plastic. Well, do it for 10 second intervals. Like, you know, the direction said. <laughs> <laughs> Gently. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. The whiskinator. So this is kind of what it looks like, creamed. Means it, meaning that the sugar and the shortening are really mixed together really well. So now we also have to add the eggs. Oh, look, an egg! Magic of editing. That's how all it's cracked up to be. Oh, no. Get cracking. Go. Right. Oh, I got it. Get cracking and move your molasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, after washing my hands with eggs and molasses, move your molasses. <laughs> Oof. 
Look at just look at that. <laughs> it's thick. Yes, it is. And I'm going to use my flapper to get the last bit of it out. Which flapper are you talking about now? Ha ha ha. At least you're not flapping your gums. I mean, ugh, that's an image yep. anyway. Oh no. Actually, this has uh, sh sugar and stuff on it, so I'm not going to do that. You know why cats are good at making souffles? Is it catastrophe? No, they've got really good whiskers. <laughs> oh dear. What's next? So next is step two is combine flour, baking soda, salt, cloves, cinnamon, and ginger. So all the dry ingredients. I was going to say, I think you left a couple things out there, hon. Did I? Did I? No, it was just a few too many. I lost track after the first two. <laughs> you were flowering success, dear. Yep. I'm assaulted by that. Oh. Mm. You know why the baker was good at spelling? Why? He was really good at synonyms. <laughs> Synonymonyms. Synonymonyms. <laughs> and sugar. To sweeten the deal. Of course. <laughs> oh, I to smell that. <laughs> Strong ginger. Slow. <laughs> this thing has a lot of power. I can smell the ginger. <laughs> and the cinnamon. Ooh, hello. Well, molasses crinkle cookies are kind of a substitute for gingerbread because there's usually the night before preparation for gingerbread. And my mom said, heck no to that when I was growing up. So I don't blame her. I would have torn around the kitchen while she was occupied. So... Wee, Aren't you told not to play with your food? Actually, never. <laughs> I never was. Maybe that was the problem. Mm. I think my parents trusted me a little too much. Wee, 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 wee. Oh. A whole new meaning to take it out for a spin. <laughs> they see me, they see me spinning. Oh no. They see me rolling. They hate. How's that dough looking? Oh. For any Simpsons fans out there, it looks, it looks like a mud monster's dancing. <laughs> oh, come on, it's funny. The dancing cookie dough, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> uh. In case your cookie dough likes to stay inside your mixing utensils, uh, try and get it out as much as you can. Try and mix it all over with your spatula just to try and make sure it gets to another side of the dough and not just one top part. It does tend if you um, keep move if you keep uh, spinning the uh, whisk around, it does tend to pile up inside. So using a spatula, as mentioned, will help get it out. And apparently, I'm having that problem. <laughs> it's trying to escape. <laughs> okay. I was trying to get it out. Now that we got half it on the table. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> so this is what it looks like more mixed up. And now we're going to let this chill for two to three hours. So we're going to think of a whole lot of more jokes to make you guys groan. Uh... Okay, not that bad. <laughs> Now that the dough has had its chill time, we're going to start making them into cookies. While the cookies are forming, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Uh, ironically, it's step three, not step one, but here we are. So we're supposed to roll the dough into the size of large walnuts. So roughly about this, this that big. Size. <laughs> You're on a roll, dear. No, the squirrels are. Oh, the squirrels. Because okay. they're coming after these walnuts. They were going nuts. 
the recipe does say you can add nuts to it, but I'd, I'd prefer not to. So roughly they're about this size. That's the size we're going with right now. You're going to put them onto your tray. Try and give them a little bit of space uh, in case they um, spread out. With, yeah, they'll spread out when they cook. So they don't feel Bake. betrayed. Uh, that, you're, that, you're, that you're getting them too close to others. I mean, there has to be some physical distancing with these ones right now. It's supposed to be about three inches apart, according to the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> this is palm demonium. Palm <laughs> You know what the uh, top oil in California is? What? Palm oil. Uh, <laughs> it's for like palm trees. Well, why else are they in the city? <laughs> well, I guess they were outside, were they outside the city limits? Nope. Then we're going to take our forks. We're going to flatten them out. Crisscross. Applesauce. Make a little grid on the inside here. So I can, there's a little grid so you do that on each cookie just to help flatten it out. Mine have already been flattened it out a little bit so I'm not putting too much pressure, just enough to uh, put a bit of shape in them. Okay, and last but not least, which has been a uh, tradition in our family, we sprinkle a little sugar on top. I thought, oh, I thought these things were sweet enough already. It's just for decoration. So is this the decor that we'll be using in the in the living room? <laughs> no, that'd be, um, the ants would love it, but no thank you. What about the uncles? They might like it too, but I think I'd rather keep them away. Social distancing. <laughs> All right, I think mine are pretty good. All right, we're ready to put our cookies in the oven. Oh, let's do this. Do this. All right, we're ready to put our cookies in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes, so we're going to keep an eye on them. And then when we take them out, we're going to put them on a wire rack to cool down, and then nibble time. <laughs> As you can see, our cookies did turn out a little bigger than we had anticipated. So apparently what we considered walnut size was avocado size. So what I will recommend is that you make your... Um, uh, dough balls a little bit smaller than what we had done um, so you get more cookies unless you want the bigger cookies and then uh, bon appetit.